You have uh, you have a playwright trying to write a play, and of course the people upstairs are making all these um, exotic noises. What, what's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're Do you have, like birds or what? <laughs> yes, uh, we're using the mating call of the human species. Play the plays with this guy that's bitching because he has these neighbors that live above him that all they do is have sex all day long, and all he hears is uh, the screams of pleasure coming from his female neighbor, and it, it's ruining his life. Like he, he he blames them for his ex leaving them. He blames <laughs> them for him not getting his work done. He blames them for his chronic masturbation problems. <laughs> And all they do upstairs is just, you know... Make noise. No, I mean, like, someone's got a triple X movie on full blast and they got stereo surround sound. That's what the play is basically about. Raunchily, loudly, just bang off the wall, strap on your seatbelt, sex. And it's non-stop. And because of this, he can't get any work done. But it's, it's sex, and there's humor in sex. There's humor in the most serious of situations. The People Upstairs is a play that sat on the shelf for about six months. And the reason it sat on the shelf and had three different directors is because it was very controversial. A lot of girls wouldn't take this role. They would be too uncomfortable. And me, I hang with the guys. Sex is a huge joke with them. I live with all guys. Guys control, like, are a huge part of my life. I just took it and now I have to be believable when I actually make the noise. Actually, you're blushing a little bit too. <laughs> Krista can be a very comedic actress. It has a good sense of timing. And, you know, sometimes when you're acting, it's all about having no shame, doing whatever you can to make the play funny. And I admire Krista for that for many reasons. And one of, them, one of the biggest reasons are, are that I admire her is she's willing to do whatever it takes to make the play funny. We have an all veteran cast, which is great. We all, we all know, actually all three of us have a really good relationship with each other on a personal level. You know, when you're casting, the noises you hear from the couple upstairs. It's hard to go up to somebody and say, hey, uh, can you make these noises for us for a play? And the girl looks at you like, what? She said, we need to make these noises for a play. Can you do it? And Krista is hysterical. She looked and just said, yeah, I'll do it. It's something that we didn't think we could get away with right at first. Now, I, like I said, I've been with theater since day one. I know we can. Rook has been with the theater troupe since its beginning. He's one of the few people that are still left who have been in every performance. And I remember him reading this play and saying, I want this play. I hope they realize I'm not that big of a dick in real life. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have a problem playing this character because he is like that level of Agnes, and I'm like, ah, eh, that's not me, but I'll try and do it anyway. Probably from the amount of noise that's going on upstairs, you're hoping the ladies in the audience are hoping you're exactly like that. Better. <laughs> <laughs> and then Chris Newcastle, who's directing it tonight, he's a first time director for us, uh, adapted it even further uh, to bring forth this end result that is excellent. And we completely changed the end from the original version that. I love the ending. It couldn't have ended in a better way. And you have a perfect cast with Rook and John Pittman and Krista Landris. It's just a really good, funny, slice of life play. My name's Alistair, and I'm a screenwriter. I work from home, alone. But you see, I, I don't get anything done. But it, it's funny what you hear when you're all by yourself, and you're trying to work hard and you get nothing done. Some of the stuff you hear is really interesting. Oh, baby, give it to me. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, 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 yeah. O
distracting. Sugar or something? I'm sorry, what? You know, that's what they usually ask for in the movies. You know, it's usually the girl trying to come over and get the hot guy's number or something. Except for nowadays, it's more like guys trying to come over and give a girl a roofie or something. <laughs> no. Look, I, I, I just came because you want to read Bibles with me. But it's okay, I already have one. No, I'm not here to read Bibles or anything like that. I'm here to talk to you about the, what are you talking about are you trying to sell me something is it what like mary Kay? who is it no, Ken? I'm, some strange guy trying to get us to join his occult or something <laughs> yo yo buddy up here up here no, no, no. Look, i'm not here to peddle religion i'm not here for no damn cup of sugar i'm actually your neighbor from downstairs i'm here about the noise what noise the justin bieber cds because i can always burn those Hey! No, well, no, but yes, I mean no! Please burn them, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here about the noise when you... When we watch TV? No, when you... When you guys... Listen to music. No, I've already said that. When you guys... Um... Uh, play... Use the vacuum cleaner. When you guys have sex, okay? Uh... You can hear that? Everybody can hear that. Everybody can hear that. That's how good I am. <laughs> Look, if you guys could just maybe close a window or keep it down, that'd be great, right? Yeah, look. Peace. Bye. So after the most embarrassing moment of my life, I figured, okay, it's settled. It'll be over with. But no, fate was having too much fun at my expense. So, a few days after that, I was downstairs in the lobby of my apartment building. You know, 
where all the mailboxes are, where you get your mail, and that, that kind of thing. And guess who I run into? <laughs> hey, it's Alice there from downstairs. It's Ken from upstairs. Still looking for that cup of sugar? <laughs> no, <fuck. laughs> Ken, uh, the other day, I'm sorry. It's just that you guys are... What? You guys are phenomenal! <laughs> Dude, seriously, I've never in my life heard anything like that in reality. I mean, yeah, maybe I've heard it in movies. Not that I've watched those or anything. <laughs> you don't need me to give you a shovel. Come again? You know, you seem to be digging yourself a pretty big hole as it is. True. It's just... <coughs> I don't know, dude. I know what you're up there with. Man, I don't understand how lucky you are. I remember the first time I saw her. When, when she moved in here. Four years, three months, and two days ago. <laughs> she had on this green dress that just shimmered and set off, the, I swear, the body of an angel. And those eyes, if you didn't know anybody, you'd swear they're glowing. Whoa, whoa there, bud. I mean, she's all right. She's nothing to write home about, though. What are you talking about? I mean, dude, seriously, if I wrote home, she's all I'd write about. All day long, every day. Every letter would be about her. Buddy, buddy. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. on a pedestal like that. I'm sorry, dude. It's your girlfriend right now. <laughs> My Wait girlfriend? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Pedestal? Yeah. Dude, there aren't enough pedestals in this world <laughs> for me to put her high up enough on. Dude, I mean, shoot, dude, dude, dude. She's like a four on a scale of one to ten for the girl, part of the hottest girls I've been with. I mean, guy's got to feed his needs, right? <laughs> I don't understand why you don't put her on a pedestal. She's smart, she's funny, she's graceful, she's kind. And dude, you're starting to sound fucking pathetic. You know, I talked to her once. I'm not that pathetic. She was taking her groceries, it was raining. I, I helped her with the groceries so the bags wouldn't get wet. And I remember those moments. I'll never forget them. I even asked for her number. Sure, what I got wasn't a genuine number. Suicide hotline my ass. <laughs> you, know you know what? I still relive those moments as if they were real. Because you are the luckiest man in the world. And if those moments were real for me... You know why those moments aren't real for you? Because you're that damn sad and pathetic. No. Sweet. Hey, I didn't... Save uh, it? Now, c come on now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was just joking. <laughs> did you really mean everything oh. you just said? Yeah, I, I kind of did, yeah. Well, I didn't mean to give you a, a fake number. I got a new one, and I accidentally switched them up. I'm so sorry. Oh, come on. I really did want you to call me. I'm sorry, I didn't. Baby, come on. Come on, you really don't want this guy. Peace. Come on, really? You want that over this? I mean, seriously? <laughs> Hello, my name is Ken. I work as a mason. Of course, been a little off my game these days. I think it has something to do with that last girl I slept with. I, uh, I think she gave me crabs or something. <laughs> but, uh, you know, being a mason doesn't exactly pay for everything, so I had to pick up another job to help pay off my student loans. I'm one of those telemarketers. I, uh, I call people up in the middle of dinner time to make sure I ruin their meals. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, there's been a slight problem with this. I haven't been able to sleep or get anything done. Give it to me. You know, because of the neighbors downstairs. <laughs> but uh, one thing though is, I work in a movie theater where I get all of the best posters ever. But uh, things are still kind of rough with all this noise. Yeah. <laughs>